So the end of the display, God Save the Queen, on the front of Buckingham Palace. And my apologies to people in the crowd who can hear every word I'm saying. There's nothing we can do about it here at the BBC, but for people at home, that was the end of one of the most spectacular firework displays London has ever seen. People are here completely breathless with astonishment at the effects we saw. And the Queen herself laughing and looking excited at particular parts of the display. And she will now leave the dais saying goodbye to the children who escorted her up here and then go back down to Buckingham Palace. crowds lining the Mall here. Many of them will no doubt stay overnight because tomorrow morning at about half past ten in the Gold State coach the Queen will come from Buckingham Palace back up the Mall towards Trafalgar Square to go to St Paul's for the service there. So there have been people who've been camping out here, some of them for two or three days already and many it being quite a fine night and not raining as we expected may well stay overnight now. I don't expect these crowds will clear for some time. The car going on down towards the Victoria Memorial, lit there, with the fountains that were put in specially, and God Save the Queen, you can just see the words still on the front of Buckingham Palace. Her car comes round the Victoria Memorial now and the beacon that she lit is still flaming, flames going up 20 or 30 feet high, the last of this chain of beacons. It nearly came to 2002, which was the number they wanted to hit for obvious reasons. It was very nearly 2,000 beacons they estimate were lit. The Queen waving to this crowd, pressing close to the car as she comes round back towards the palace. Well, what an evening it's been. The huge success of that concert, the huge sound of it for that matter, over the Mall and over Green Park and St. James's Park and in all the screens around the country where you may have been watching it, and the uh, noise coming from within the Palace Gardens, the 12,000 standing and cheering and waving not just members of the royal family, but members of her household. The 82-year-old mistress of the robes, spotted, standing, waving her arms, in tune to the music. The Prime Minister was there, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yoko Ono was there, listening, smiling, as tributes were paid to the Beatles.
And now, as the lights go out on Buckingham Palace, as the Queen drives back in, that's it really for tonight. But once again, it's all changed now. The beacons, the remem remains of the fireworks are going to be cleared away during the night, ready for tomorrow morning, and the procession in the Gold State Coach to St Paul's. The Guildhall lunch and the carnival ending with a fly-past of aircraft with Concorde and the Red Arrows in formation coming down the Mall and over the palace. I hope we see you again tomorrow. From here, good night. One hundred TV cameras, two thousand musicians, two thousand five hundred carnival dancers, twenty thousand performers, one queen, one big day. The BBC brings you the biggest party for fifty years, the Queen's Golden Jubilee, live tomorrow morning from nine twenty-five on BBC One. I spy. He's a cop. He's a infiltrator. A rogue agent wants to be with you. Wants to be one of you. If he's under.